Tis the season to shine with H&M. Discover the holiday collection and find fashionable pieces for your wardrobe or for under the tree. Get inspired and dazzle with this year's glam. From tuxedo styles, bow detailed pieces, impressive prints, and more. From unforgettable looks to unforgettable gifts. With fashion finds to home decor, find it all at H&M. Treat your loved ones and yourself this season. Shop in-store or at H&M.com. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Selling a little or a lot? Do your thing however you cha-ching with Shopify, the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout. 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms. Get a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash offer 23. Tis the season to shine with H&M. Discover the holiday collection and find fashionable pieces for your wardrobe or for under the tree. Get inspired and dazzle with this year's glam. From tuxedo styles, bow detailed pieces, impressive prints, and more. From unforgettable looks to unforgettable gifts. With fashion finds to home decor, find it all at H&M. Treat your loved ones and yourself this season. Shop in-store or at H&M.com. Ryan Reynolds here from Mint Mobile. Not only have I been the owner of Mint Mobile for the last few years, I've also been a customer. I don't know if you knew this, but anyone can get the same premium wireless for $15 a month plan that I've been enjoying. It's not just for celebrities, so do like I did and have one of your assistant's assistants switch you to Mint Mobile today. I'm told it's super easy to do at mintmobile.com slash switch. New activation and upfront payment for three-month plan required. Taxes and fees extra. Additional restrictions apply. See mintmobile.com for full terms. Hey, I'm Ryan Reynolds, owner of Mint Mobile, with a message for everyone paying big wireless way too much. Please, for the love of everything good in this world, stop. With Mint, you can get premium wireless for just $15 a month. Of course, if you enjoy overpaying, no judgments, but that's weird. Okay, one judgment. Anyway, give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. New activation and upfront payment for three-month plan required. Taxes and fees extra. Additional restrictions apply. See mintmobile.com for full terms. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Selling a little or a lot? Do your thing however you cha-ching with Shopify, the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout. 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms. Get a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash offer 23. Imagine you walk into the room and you see a room full of people. You can tell who is confident. You can tell who is depressed. You can, it's their energy and it's their body language. Yeah. The same happens with you. It doesn't matter what you say. It doesn't matter what you wear. Your energy, it's louder than anything else. You cannot fake that. girl imagine a life where you feel supported connected and understood i get it being a mom is hard especially when you're spinning so many plates we exhaust ourselves trying to create the perfect life for our family you deserve to enjoy your family without the stress perfectionism brings on this podcast i provide practical and relatable life experiences i teach women quick and easy to use strategies to help them reclaim their identity, reignite their marriage, and enjoy their children. If you're ready to be challenged, then pull up a chair, grab a pen and paper, because it's about to go down. I'm Veronica Cisneros, a licensed marriage and family therapist, and this is the Empowered and Unapologetic Podcast. Hey ladies, welcome to Empowered and Unapologetic. I am your host, Veronica Cisneros. Today's guest literally blew my mind. Like the minute her video came on, I knew I liked her. Like she just had all of this energy and just this really good, like just sense of self. She is a woman's transformation coach who helps women who have been pushed down and have been playing it small due to toxic relationships 
or unhealed childhood trauma to create a life that is true to them and their sole purpose. Her mission is to help women who are on the path to healing from past wounds move through their limiting beliefs and internal blocks so they can finally do what they want to do, what feels good to them, serve other women in a powerful way online. So please help me by welcoming Patia Kolibova. Betia, I am so excited to have you on. And you are in Tulum, right? Exactly. So I'm still in like bikini vibes and I'm seeing everybody posting snow pictures. So I'm like, keep your cool pictures, but I will stay here on my tank tops. You know, I just, <laughs> I love the tropical. So it kind of, we didn't plan to move to Tulum, but we moved here for a few months. And I'm like, how perfect that we're doing it through like a winter season. Yeah. So we're happy about it. Yeah, that's exciting. We were in Tulum a couple of years back pre-COVID. Um, went to Shalha, Eshkaret. So I'm like totally jealous right now. I'm looking at your background and the sun and I'm like, oh, I wish I was in my bikini, like hanging out with you right now. But we're doing this. So this is this is just as good. Better than nothing, right? <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. So I'm super excited to have you on just because there's a good amount of us a good amount of um, the women that listen to this epi- episode that are struggling with, you know, their past. And most of them are married, right? And so I've noticed how our past shows up in today's, like today's relationships, right? And we keep on repeating the same cycle and we don't know how. And one thing I often get from a good amount of our listeners is, I just don't feel worthy, You know, my husband says that he's never going to change and this is just the way he's going to be. So deal with it. But maybe it's me. Maybe it's me. And my past relationships, they were the same thing. I had to be somebody else to meet their needs. And I had to, you know, I had to put myself on the back burner. And now that I'm a mom, now that I'm married, it just, I just can't do this for another five years. And so can you please tell us about you and your story before we get into all of it? Absolutely. You know, and when you were sharing with me how like your listeners are feeling and what is happening in their lives, like I feel so much of that was a part of my story and part of my growth, you know, because I grew up um, like the first thing that happened and how I happened is that my mom was dating my biological father dating him for two years by accident, got pregnant in the first encounter that, you know, she was sleeping with him. So my whole life, I was thinking I'm an accident. I don't matter. I shouldn't be here. And my mom would have a better life than if, if I'm not there. And mind you, my mom, when she find out that she's pregnant, never in her mind passed through her mind that she would not want me. That is a story that I have created. She divorced when I was two years old, remarried when I was five years old with a man who was narcissistic, who was physically and mentally abusive to me. So I grow up getting confirmation to my story that I'm unworthy and unlovable. Yeah. Right. And that was happening for three decades of my life, being in toxic relationship, men cheating, men taking advantage of me financially, you know, physically. It's just... It was so much pain there and I didn't want to live. When I was 18, I ran away from home and the same year I attempted the suicide Yeah, because I was looking at my life and I'm like, if this is it, I don't want it. I don't want to live it. I was 18 years old. And since I was 11, I was already battling eating disorder. Yeah. Because I was hating my life and hating my body. And I was thinking maybe if I am just thin enough, then maybe I will be lovable. Then maybe I will be worth of protection. So I was trying to literally shrink myself Mm -hmm. and to be smaller and not to be seen. Yeah. And that was happening for three decades of my life. And it didn't change until I realized that something has to change because when I was, you know, getting into my like 29th year, And um, I can also go into that now I I understand it was happening and it's happening with many women in their, you know, 28 and a half year old, one year earlier or later. And then again in their like late 50s, because the Saturn is going around the planet 
and it's in the exact time you were born. Mm. And the Saturn, it's a planet that will disturb a lot of things in your life and you will start noticing what you have not been noticing before, what you have been ignoring, like your relationships, like your bosses, like your kids, you know, all of these things that you've been ignoring, it's going to just like multiply itself and you will have this inner disturbance of like, I know I'm meant for more. This can't be it. Yeah. That was the time that I had to start working on myself. If not, I couldn't live literally. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you're saying the Saturn, tell me more about that. So it's, it's called like the, the return of the Saturn, right? And I'm no astrologist. I'm just obsessed with learning. And I, you know, study human design, which has a piece of astrology in it. Astrology, numerology, Kabbalah, quantum physics, all these beautiful modalities. Um, so when you're 28 years and a half years old, that's when the, the planet Saturn, it's coming into the exact same position as when you were born. Okay. Saturn, it's a planet that will just bring up all the stuff that you were hiding, all the stuff that you were trying to bury, and it will disturb you. It will disrupt all of your patterns Yeah, and it will just shake you and awake you. And it will happen when you're 28 years old, one year before or after. That's when so many of my clients are like in midlife crisis. They're around their 30 and they realize I hate my job and I'm not in loving relationship and I'm not feeling worthy and deserving and I'm just getting by and, you know, just going through the motion. And then it happens again when you're around like 56, 58, because that's when again, the Saturn it's coming to shake off the rest. Okay. That's why when you're meeting usually people in their 60s, they don't give a damn, <laughs> you know, they shook everything off and they don't care what you think about their hair. They don't think they don't care about what you think about their preferences. Yeah, This is who I am. Right. So ideally they shook everything off and realign with who they really are. I've never heard of this. I've never heard of this. I'm not opposed to it. I just I've never heard of this. So I'm a bit intrigued. So. Who who is is there somebody that's developed this? Is there like research that supports this? Again, I have never heard like of this Saturn shift. I've heard of like Mercury rising, you know, but um, but I've never heard of this. So can you please tell me a little bit more? Like, I I I, I don't quite understand it. Absolutely. So again, like I said, I'm no astrologist, right? This comes from astrology. So there is a science like behind it, like when they're studying the planets. And so when we say the Saturn return, that's the moment when the Saturn like comes back into the exact placement when you were born and it brings its lessons with it, you know? So it, it is it actually are, the planet Saturn? It's the planet Saturn. Exactly. So, you know, like everything it's influencing us. And this is not woo-woo. This is a science, right? Like when you look at the moon, the moon, it's affecting, you know, and influencing the tides and we're 70% of the water. So we're going to feel when there is a full moon and new moon, we are going to, you know, uh, feel it in, in our body. And the same is happening with other planets. But, you know, like, there's this Mercury in retrograde, like everybody's freaking about, like my, my copy, uh, copy, the, the printer, it's breaking and my phone, it's in a breaking dang Southern, the, the Mercury in retrograde, but it's just like what we are bringing forth, right? Like what we are really, um, paying attention to, but it's really about the Saturn. It's really about surrendering, surrendering the old, surrendering the things that really not, not serving you anymore. And yeah. that's why you just can't live with it anymore. You know, it's, that's why I say like the clients, they come to me, they're like in their midlife crisis. They don't even realize it. And I learned this just, you know, a couple of years ago. So I was already past that. But when I look back, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's when I start my like awakening into, I hate this job and I'm married and I'm miserable. So I'm, you know, I'm happily divorced. I just got married with the love of my life. Nice. But when I was 28 years, 29 years, I was miserable and I really didn't want to live like that, you know? So 
it has like this sobering qualities in it when it really like wakes you up and you see the world differently and it's subtle it's not like you wake up one day but it feels like it just pile up into you gotcha it's really just time to get real you know time to get real with your life choices and really know who you are yes definitely so what was it like for you what was the uh, uh, what was the initial step to get you to this place where it was like okay my life is actually worth living like how did you get there absolutely so for me first was really experiencing the contrast and feeling like why am i even here yeah. and i was always this like looking for a purpose in life. Why am I even here? What am I supposed to do here? Because it just didn't feel right to me. You know, Veronica, I was doing all the right thing. I went to school. I got a good grades. I went to corporate job. I got a married, like on a paper, I did fitness competitions, you know, and things like that. So everything on the outside looked great, but in the inside I was dying. I was feeling miserable. I, and you know what was worse? I was feeling guilty. Yes. Because people will come to me and like, oh, you have such a great life. Look at your body. You have a six pack. You look amazing. Look at your beautiful husband. My husband was handsome. He was a narcissistic, you know, Virgo. Yeah. <laughs> I basically married my stepfather, if we would yeah. put it this way. Like you go into what you know, right? Yeah. Um, so on the outside, everything looked great. But on the inside, I, lo- I felt so miserable and I felt so guilty because how do you explain people you're feeling miserable if you have a great paying job, if you have a great looking husband, if you have great looking body, who cares that you have a bulimia for almost, you know, two decades, right? Yeah. So people didn't know that and I was feeling ashamed. Yeah. So I got to that point when I was almost in my thirties, when I'm like, something has to change. And I literally, I was weeping on my knees after one night of another binging and purging and feeling so physically and emotionally tired. I start to thank God for, you know, uncle Google start yeah. typing in how to be happy, how to overcome suicidal thoughts, how to overcome eating disorder, like all of these questions. That was a decade ago. It wasn't as easy as it is now. Now it's like million coaches for everything, podcasts for everything. You don't, there are communities, you don't feel so alone. A decade ago, I was feeling like I'm, I must be crazy. Yeah. So thankfully I found the Louise Hay and her publishing company. And I learned, you know, about her, um, you know, I was listening to her audio books and her videos. And I learned about Dr. Wayne Dyer and Tony Robbins. So instead of listening to my inner critic, who is telling me you're unworthy, who do you think you are? I started to listen to them every single day. I swear when I wasn't sleeping, I would be listening to audios, videos, YouTubes, just to literally brainwash myself to give myself hope. Yeah. So that's when I started to learn about self-love and self-worth and starting to look into, because I am very like, I used to be like very skeptical and explain this to me and I need to understand it in my head. I'm very practical, very masculine. I have a like... I have an MBA and I have a bachelor's in marketing. So all of this, it's like, explain me, right? Like I need to understand, but I was very disconnected from my body. I was very disconnected from my heart and I was very disconnected from my feminine because the way I was raised, it's feminine, it's weak. Yeah. Feminine, it's not enough. Feminine, it's supposed to obey. Yep. That's not how it is. Feminine, it's so powerful that it was push down so yeah. it doesn't rise so that's when I and how I started in my 30s and like ever since I'm almost on a decade on this journey and it's fascinating because it just you always get what you're ready for and you always get what you need not always what you want yeah and Veronica let me tell you I am so thankful I didn't get so many things that I wanted because they really were not true to who I really am. Can you give me some examples? Absolutely. I'm so happy I didn't stay with my ex who's, who cheated on me with a stripper for three years. Right. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. Because he was a great man. You know, he was very charismatic. He was a good person. He was an entrepreneur. He was a chiropractor. And we were 40 years together. And I find out that three years out of that, he was sleeping with someone else that I saw how they met. I was there when they met. 
Oh, and wow. I had like an emotional breakdown. And back then I couldn't understand. Yeah. Like I'm not jealous type, but that day when I saw them and they were only talking, I started crying. Yeah. And that was my intuition telling yeah. me something isn't right. right. And he told me, you're crazy. What are you doing? What are you embarrassing me? Blah, 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 blah. Three years later, I find out I was right. And I was just settling to fit in his box, to be the good girl, to go to the school, to be independent, to make my own money. And he has the great intentions, yeah. but he wasn't the man for me. Yeah. So my husband now is faithful and loyal and loving and treats me like a queen. And don't say that my meditation is BS. My ex up until this day doesn't understand what I'm doing. And I built six figure online coaching business, you know? So you don't have to understand it works for me, you know? Exactly. And thank God that I didn't got it because we were like, he didn't want to get married, my ex, but he like, I want to have a kids and things like that. But there was just like so many red flags that I was ignoring. So I'm so thankful that I didn't got that or that I didn't got the jobs that I applied for that. I was applying to get to university in Czech Republic. And when I arrived to the university, because it was in the next city and it was like two hours drive, you know, I get there. And when I'm going into the exam to take, I forgot my ID. Oh my goodness. And they wouldn't allow me to come. Oh. And, you know, back then that it's like, Oh my yeah. gosh, like, I don't know, even like 14, even like, I don't know, 12 years ago, you know? And so I'm like, oh, can my aunt, can she like fax it to me? Can she come with the car and bring it? They wouldn't allow me. Thank God they didn't. Because if I would get to that university, I would stay in Czech Republic, small town, small mindset. I wouldn't, I moved. Um, so I went to the university when I was like 18, 19, applying for that. When I was 20, I moved to London. From London, I moved to Spain. I lived there for four years. From Spain, I moved to United States where I'm for 11 years now. So thank God yeah. that the things that I wanted didn't work out because something just had a grand aversion for me because back then, small girl from a small town, feeling unworthy and unlovable, I couldn't picture myself living the life that I'm living now. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I love the way you describe that because a, a good amount of us get so caught up in this is as good as it's going to get and it's never going to get better. And I have to stay in this relationship or I have to, I have to continue to put myself last because if I don't put myself last, then the relationship's going to end or he's no longer going to love me. And it's like, oh my goodness, like... You are so caught up in your fears mm -hmm. and not allowing your past pains to teach you something. Absolutely. And that's something that we really get to learn because right before I met my husband, literally like a couple months before I met him, I said, I will better, I would rather be alone than in a bad company again. Because the man that I was seeing right before I like, you know, met my husband a few months before that. He was treating me like a goddess and it was beautiful feeling because he would cook for me and give me massages and all these things. And he was also spiritual entrepreneurial. So I'm like, oh my gosh, this could be it, you know, feeling like that. And then I find out a couple months later, I wasn't the only goddess. So wow. um, that was the moment that I'm like, and no more, because I realized that I lost myself in relationships. Yeah. When men would meet me, I would be this strong, independent, fun, bubbly girl. When I'm with them, I started to overthink. What does he need? What can I do? How he will stay with me? You know, I would lose myself in relationship. And then think about it. It's unfair. Yeah. It's unfair to them because they're like, well, I met this girl who is taking care of herself and it's independent and busy. And I get to like, I don't want to say work for it, but like I value her and I value her personality. And then you become... A needy and texting all the time or calling all the time or not even that but just like honey whatever you want do you want me to cook do you want me to come do you want me to stay I was like a freaking puppy yeah, yeah. that's completely different from who they say yes to be dating yep so it's not just like all men are bad and all the men cheat that's not true I was allowing it yes I was allowing it with my husband the day that we met and we met at a mastermind in Las Vegas, you know, four years ago, we were not dating or anything. We just attended the workshop together, mastermind. We were talking then and I told him in my life, I have only loyal, loving people, 
loyalty, it's everything to me. I instilled it in him even before ever he was my boyfriend. Yeah. He knew that loyalty is everything to me. If you're not a loyal person, you're not in my life. And that's it. Yeah. He knew I have to be loyal or I will not be in her life. And every single woman has to have the non-negotiable. Yes. If you don't know yourself. If you don't know your non-negotiables, the world, the people will take you from one side to other side because you don't know. Yep. For example, I used to be a smoker. I quit smoking like a decade ago, probably. But now if you come to me and like, hey, do you want a cigarette? No, I don't smoke. I don't have to think about it. Yeah. I prefer, my preference is I'm a vegan, right? So I eat just vegan choices. If you come to me and like, hey, do you want to go to steakhouse and get a, you know, juicy steak? I'm like, no, I don't do that. Yeah. I don't have to think about it. So if you come to me and say like, hey, do you want to be in polyamorous relationship? Nope, I don't do that. I'm a person for one person. Yeah. So we waste so much of our energy because we don't know what we stand for. And if you don't know what you stand for, you will get a variety of everything. Yeah. Because if you don't stand for something, you fall for everything. Bingo. So with so with this constant infidelity, right? So you have constant infidelity in all of these relationships. And usually when there's infidelity, we tend to feel like it's us. We're not enough. You know, I need to do more. I need, you know, he cheated because I wasn't giving him enough sex or, you know, um, Maybe I was, my body wasn't great. Maybe it was like, we tried to go out and fix ourselves to go to, to meet this person's needs, to meet this person's standards so that we're not cheated on. How did you get to that place where it was like, okay, I'm able to identify my non-negotiables. I love that you, you um, highlighted that. I'm able to identify my non-negotiables and I'm not going to do this anymore. You said you went from like smoking to not smoking and now it becomes naturally. How did you start to like strengthen that muscle, I guess, is my question. You mean of feeling worthy or? Having, yeah, like, feeling worthy. I feel like, yeah, I'm not going to put up with this shit. This guy's, you know, is cheating on me and I deserve more. How did you go there? So what I realized is that I was outsourcing my happiness Ah, yes. Worthiness. Write that so, down, ladies. Uh, Outsourcing my happiness. I love that you said that. Yes, because if he texts me, I'm happy. If he calls me, I'm happy. If he invites me for a date, I'm happy. But if not, something is wrong with me. Because if if I would be really that great, he couldn't like, you know, like resist to be with me. Yeah. And the thing is that I realized that instead of outsourcing my happiness, I get to be happy first. Yeah. So... I became the best lover I ever had. Yay. I asked myself, what would I do and how would I behave? What would it look like when I am in that dream relationship? Nothing is perfect. And in dream relationship that it's worth it, right? That I feel amazing. And, and I said to myself, like, well, I would go on a date and I would go for dinner and I would use like essential oils to smell good. And I would do my hair and I would wear nice lingerie because if not, we're like, oh, I don't care. Like, you know, pansies after grandma, right? <laughs> how does it make you feel? Like I wear like my, my boy shorts, you know, and it's not like, sexy lingerie but it makes me feel amazing so when I yeah. wear it my husband it's like wow you know it's yeah. like booty shorts right it's not yeah. like Victoria's Secret like you know like yeah. being on stage um but I became the best I start to buy myself flowers I started to take myself on a date. I created a space for myself in the morning that was absolutely non-negotiable for me because when I treat myself like the queen that I am, the world will reflect it back to me oh, and yeah. people smile at you more and open you the door and you become magnetic because you're not needy. Like, think about it. Have you ever have a boyfriend or even like a friend who would be like texting you all the time and calling you all the time? And you're like, oh my God, get live. <laughs> right? It's like, oh, but we are like that when we are needy, like hungry for attention, hungry for love. Yeah. People like your energy, it's louder than anything else. This is not woo-woo stuff. Imagine you walk into the room 
and you see a room full of people, you can tell who is confident. You can tell who is depressed. You can, it's their energy and it's their body language. Yeah. The same happens with you. It doesn't matter what you say. It doesn't matter what you wear. Your energy, it's louder than anything else. You cannot fake that. Like when you're needy, you're pushing away. So, you know, my ex cheated on me with, for three years with stripper. And when I asked him, like, why, you know, like, why did you do that? He yeah. said that, like, he had this, like, uh, rescuer syndrome that he wanted to help her. <laughs> I'm like, okay, for three years helping, okay. Um, and then he also tell me, like, I, like, I love you and I treat you like, you know, the queen, the way I treat her in the bed, I would never do that to you. I'm like, well, you see, that's not on me. Mm -hmm. That's his issues and his not being able to be open and to be true to himself. Because if he would be true to himself, he would be speaking about his needs and desires. And it's not like we didn't explore and did some things, but he, that's his thing. It's nothing to do with me. Not at all. Not at all. I love that you said how to become your best lover. Like yeah. how do I... I remember doing, I, I personally did this where it was like, how do I create the perfect day? Like the perfect day. What do I want to do if I want, you know, and I t told my husband and the kids, let's go eat outside. We're going to have breakfast outside. We have a, a nice backyard. So we went outside and I was like, okay, what do I want to do next? And I was like, you know, what? while we're out here, I want to play some music. And I played, I love music. We played music and it was like, well, I want to dance. And I'm not going to hint to my husband that I want to dance. I'm just going to grab his ass and I'm going to start dancing, you know? And it was kind of like all of those things. And it was, it was, it was essentially creating the perfect day. But what I realized by doing that exercise was we are truly in control. We are truly in control of living the life we want to live. We are truly in control of you know, um, accomplishing our goals and how we show up is how other people show up and behave around us. And the minute you start to behave as, you know, this confident, worthy individual, you're hundred percent correct. People definitely respond to it. And is, it is magnetic because they want to be around that. They want, they're attracted to that. When did you realize this is it? I'm in my, I'm in my zone. I'm truly living the life I want to live. When did you realize that? I feel like now it's like every day. <laughs> yeah. You know, there is a sense of like accomplishment and appreciation and it just keeps coming. It's a, it's a progressive, you know, it's uh it wasn't like from day to day, you know, it, 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 it brought a lot of like through, through a lot of struggle, you know, and it was like leaving a job, leaving a relationship, you know, and, uh, creating a healthy relationship with my finances, with my body. And it's just, you know, the, the thing that I like to say, it's the better it gets, the better it gets. Yeah. And that's how I live. And it's just getting better and better and better. And I'm always in awe on how life keeps, you know, bringing me these beautiful surprises. And listen, there is sometimes, you know, like struggle. We came here to grow. We came here to expand and evolve. The life will have a struggle, but it doesn't have to have a suffering. There is a huge difference. The struggle is to grow and evolve. Suffering is pain and you don't have to live in pain. So you get to choose. Yeah. And I, I love the diff I love how you, uh, how you provide like those two different examples. The struggle is, you know, it's going to happen. It's, it's inevitable. We're all going to struggle. We're all going to be met with some form of defeat or some form of pain. However, the suffering is 100% optional. We suffer when we do not accept what's already happened. We suffer when we try to go ahead and change something. We suffer when we spend all of our time trying to come up with an answer that's completely out of our control. And so being able to go ahead and accept and receive and learn from some of the mistakes we make or some of the things that we encounter. So right now, what are you doing to live the life you want to live? Mm, it's beautiful. So for me, I always put myself first that it's just non-negotiable for me because how I show up for myself, it's how I will be showing up for my clients, for the retreats that I'm hosting and things that I'm doing. So 
every morning I just check in with myself. Like, what do I need right now? What do I need today? What do I feel like? So I have a beautiful morning routine and every single is different. Sometimes we lay in bed and just cuddle, you know, me and my husband and a dog. Sometimes I journal. Sometimes I do breath work. Sometimes I do yoga. Sometimes we go to, um, you know, gym together. We have our rituals with foods. We do smoothies, celery juice, lemon water. So morning, it's spacious for me. I don't work before like 11 a.m. local time. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I have international clients, so there might be exceptions or international interviews. So I can do exception, but normally I don't work before 11 a.m. because that's how I serve the best when I serve myself. So how you treat yourself right upon waking up, you're telling the world how you want to be treated. So I, I'm like on do not disturb 24 seven, literally I have all the notifications off. And also I, I'm on an airplane mode, you know, throughout the night and I don't turn it in the morning until the time that I feel like, okay, I serve myself. So yeah. you get to serve yourself first. Okay. Awesome. What is one thing you'd like women to go ahead and take away from this interview? Hmm. You know, I would love them to remember that there is nothing wrong with them. Yeah. And they're perfectly made for their purpose. The way they look, the way they speak, the way they express themselves, the way they explore and experience this world, it's perfect who they were meant to be because we try to change so much our hair, our body, how we speak, you know, just fit the boxes, but you were not meant to really fit. You were meant to be yourself. That is your purpose. Yeah. What is one thing that you want I guess, what do you want your legacy to be? Mm, oh, it's beautiful. I just had a, a meeting with a client right before our interview, and I was sharing with her that there was a woman that I impacted with my coaching in Bali, and I met her in, in Bali in person, and she created two foundations. And because I told her about you know social media and also abundance, now she's able to raise money in minutes for the people in need in Bali, what would in the past took her weeks. Yeah. So I told her, like, that is my legacy. I already left my legacy. I empower women to live in their purpose. And I already have done that with so many women. And I see the ripple effect that it's so beautiful. If I die tomorrow, and which I know I won't, but if I do, I'm fulfilled. I'm happy. I left the legacy of women who are empowered, live in their purpose, and are helping others. That's amazing. Well, how can our listeners find you? So my favorite place to hang out is Instagram, you know, when it works. So it's just my name, <laughs> Petya Kolibova. My website is the same thing, Petya Kolibova. And I have a podcast, Unapologetically Abundant. So those are like my three favorite places. Nice, nice. Well, thank you so much for joining us. This was absolutely amazing. I feel like I learned so much. I feel like I already know you. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, you do. It's just like a reflection, right? Of what we need to hear and see. So thank you so much for having me. And thank you so much for all the work you're doing. It really is making a difference in people's lives. And I remember when I was depressed and feeling alone, podcast and listening to others gave me hope. And that's what you're doing now, Veronica. You're giving guidance and hope to those that really need it. So thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Many women lose their own identity in the shadow of being a mom and a wife. We are a community of women who support each other. We leave perfectionism behind to become empowered and unapologetic. I want to personally invite you to join our girl gang. It's a free Facebook community for women just like you. Go to www.facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash empowered and unapologetic. See you there. What's up, ladies? Just want to let you guys know that your ratings and reviews for this podcast are greatly appreciated. If you love this podcast, please go to iTunes right now, write a review, rate the episode, and subscribe. Don't forget to share it with your friends. Addiction impacts all of us. Addiction's consequences run through all of us. From ourselves to our loved ones and through our communities, addiction creates so much loss and grief. My name is Dwayne Osterlin, and I'm the host of the Addicted Mind podcast, a show featuring personal stories, expert guests, and vital information about addiction and addiction recovery. 
We'll talk with leading treatment providers to discuss the latest research and treatment options for this devastating disease and advocate for mental health awareness. We discuss topics like the importance of creating a community of support to helping loved ones to some of the latest research on psychedelic medicines. The Addictive Mind podcast has been about creating hope, listening to stories of many amazing people that have overcome addiction and are thriving. If you or a loved one is struggling with addiction, subscribe to the Addictive Mind podcast wherever you get your podcasts or check out theaddictivemind.com. New episodes every Monday. See you there. It's easy to blame ourselves for our struggles with alcohol. We see people around us being able to control their drinking without any consequences, yet no matter what we try, we can't seem to figure it out for ourselves. My name is Jillian Teets, and I am the host of the Sober Powered Podcast, where I use my biochemistry background to explain the latest research in addiction and help you understand both why you drink the way you do and how to develop the skills and mindset you need to find freedom from alcohol. I discuss topics like why we think about our drinking 24-7, why we have no off switch, and why we crave alcohol. If you're struggling with your drinking or you know someone who is, then I hope that you will check out the Sober Powered Podcast. New episodes every Friday. See you there. Addiction impacts all of us. Addiction's consequences run through all of us. From ourselves to our loved ones and through our communities, addiction creates so much loss and grief. My name is Dwayne Osterlin, and I'm the host of the Addicted Mind podcast, a show featuring personal stories, expert guests, and vital information about addiction and addiction recovery. We'll talk with leading treatment providers to discuss the latest research and treatment options for this devastating disease and advocate for mental health awareness. We discuss topics like the importance of creating a community of support to helping loved ones to some of the latest research on psychedelic medicines. The Addicted Mind podcast has been about creating hope listening to stories of many amazing people that have overcome addiction and are thriving. If you or a loved one is struggling with addiction, subscribe to the Addicted Mind podcast wherever you get your podcasts or check out theaddictedmind.com. New episodes every Monday. See you there. Hey there, this is Casey McGuire Davidson, host of the Hello Someday podcast. I'm an ex-red wine girl turned life coach who helps busy women change their relationship with alcohol. I spent 20 years climbing the corporate ladder while drinking a bottle of wine a night to unwind. In the Hello Someday podcast, my goal is to teach you the tried and true secrets of creating and living a life you don't want to escape from. Each week, I'll bring you tools, lessons, and conversations to help you drink less and live more. I'll teach you how to navigate our drinking obsessed culture without a buzz and how to turn the decision to stop drinking from your worst case scenario to the best decision of your life. You can find new episodes of the Hello Someday podcast every Thursday, wherever you listen. And I hope you check it out. It's easy to blame ourselves for our struggles with alcohol. We see people around us being able to control their drinking without any consequences, yet no matter what we try, we can't seem to figure it out for ourselves. My name is Jillian Teets, and I am the host of the Sober Powered Podcast, where I use my biochemistry background to explain the latest research in addiction and help you understand both why you drink the way you do and how to develop the skills and mindset you need to find freedom from alcohol. I discuss topics like why we think about our drinking 24-7, why we have no off switch, and why we crave alcohol. If you're struggling with your drinking or you know someone who is, then I hope that you will check out the Sober Powered Podcast. New episodes every Friday. See you there.